Minister of Treasury. Mr. Speaker, I present the Supplementary Appropriation mm. Bill of 2022. Mr. Clark. Just reading a bill for an act to grant and apply out of the consolidated revenue fund a reduction of expenditure for the year ending 31 December 2022, as well as reappropriate appropriations contained in the Appropriation General Public Service Expenditure 2022 Act 2021. Minister of Treasury. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I move that the bill be now read a second time. Make your speech. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I am honoured to present the 2022 supplementary budget to this Parliament. <clears throat> Treasurers bring supplementary budgets to Parliament when there has been a significant change in the budget outlook, such as a fall or increase in revenues significantly different from initial forecasts, or if new policies require specific items of new spending. In 2022, we have both. We have a major increase in net revenues, as well as the need for specific appropriations, such as 160 million Kina for school project fee subsidies, announced as part of our household assistance package. This is my fourth supplementary budget. It is framed in what the IMF calls the gloomy and uncertain outlook for the global economy. <clears throat> Fortunately, but also because we have made good fortune, PNG is doing much better economically than many other countries. Mr. Speaker, I presented a MAIFO update on our economy on Wednesday. <clears throat> to summarize, PNG is, is experienced by far its highest rate of growth in the keener size of our economy in our history. There are inflationary pressures, but the 611 million Kina household assistance package is helping to keep these under control with inflation at a moderate 6.2 percent down from a likely 9 or 10 percent inflation rate without the government's actions and the 9.5 percent average in other developing countries. <clears throat> But as highlighted in my comments on MAIFO, we must make sure that the positive macroeconomic news does not blind us to the pain being faced by many of our families still at this time. Mr. Speaker, as outlined on Wednesday, we have had some big revenue pluses driven by one-off events, especially through the surge in oil prices. But we also know that what goes up in the resource sector must also come down. That is why I agree so strongly with Prime Minister Marape <clears throat> that our economic independence depends on us diversifying our economy. We need to provide much more emphasis on the agriculture sector the downstream processing of our logs and other goods on building our tourism sector to tap into PNG's globally unique and beautiful people and landscapes. On exploring options for building a news service economy, including through labor mobility schemes. <clears throat> I also agree with comments by other leaders on Wednesday that we need to examine more closely those areas where revenues are below what we expected, such as GST and excise and other non-tax revenues, <clears throat> and then determine what 
can be done. We have decided to invest this additional tax revenue this year, mainly to help families and to repay outstanding arrears and commitments. Our expenditure priorities, household assistance package, removal of all fuel taxes. <clears throat> In April, I set out a 4.611 million household assistance package. The largest component was the removal of taxes on retail fuel products at an estimated cost of 250 million kina, we entirely removed fuel taxes for six months. This means that we removed the 61 toya per liter excise on petrol and the 23 toya per liter excise on diesel and the two toya per liter on Zoom. In addition, we entirely removed the GST on retail fuel products. So for example, based on August fuel prices in Port Moresby, this meant that instead of a litre of petrol costing 4 kina 89 per litre, we have removed 61 toya excise and 44 toya GST. So this should bring the price down by 105 toya or one kina five toya to three kina eighty four, a saving of twenty seven percent. I am pleased that the Marape Rosso government <clears throat> has decided to extend this measure for a further two months, from first of November to thirty first of December this year in twenty twenty two. This is estimated to reduce revenues by a further 83.3 <clears throat> million kina. I will put forward to the Parliament today changes in the GST and Excise Tariff Acts to implement this extra assistance. This is continued practical assistance to help support families. Household assistance package funding school project fees. A second key component of the household assistance package was an agreement for the government to pay the 20% school project fees for all families around our country. This was seen as a practical measure to get more keener into our household budgets around our country. PNG does not have a formal social security system. Support for school fees and project fees is probably the most practical option we have to help families around the nation deal with the cost of living pressures. We initially estimated that the cost of 100, at a cost of 126 million kina. The Department of Education has now indicated the total cost will be 160 million kina. This supplementary budget provides the full 160 million kina in funds for this critical program. I now expect the Department of Education to urgently put in place the processes for getting these funds out to schools and to households. I would have preferred even an initial amount had gone out earlier in the year, but have been reassured that the program will not be delayed any further. And if it is, then the Marape government's focus on key performance indicators will quickly bring those responsible to account. Household assistance package, personal income tax cuts. Mr. Speaker, I was pleased that from 1st of June 2022, all wage earners paying tax are receiving up to an extra 42 kina 30 toya in their fortnightly pay packets. This is a significant gain 
to household pay packets. And for those still complaining about the additional profits tax on the banking sector, remember that this is estimated to cost only 88 toya per fortnight in lower superannuation returns. While you are getting an extra 42 kina 30 toya per fortnight in these personal income tax cuts. This measure was costed at 135 million kina. Extraordinary, these tax cuts have not been implemented by all employers. The largest employer that has failed to pass on these tax cuts is, is extraordinarily the government itself. For some reason, the tax cuts have been processed through the Alesco pay system. The lesson from this is that we need to be very careful in introducing changes to taxes. There are real administrative issues that must be overcome. As part of our considerations for a supplementary budget, and let me be very frank here, the NEC agreed to lift the tax-free threshold from 17,500 kina to 20,000 kina, providing up to another 21 kina, 15 toya per fortnight to our taxpayers. An extra 60 million was provided for this change. We had hoped this change could have been introduced from 1st of October or 1st of November. However, we have received very strong advice from the IRC that it would be better to delay implementation to the 1st of January next year, 2023. This would allow the changes to be implemented as part of an annual tax schedule and would avoid having three different thresholds in the same one year. So after very careful considerations, we have agreed to, to defer these tax cuts until 1st of January 2023. The exact length of these additional tax cuts will be considered as part of the 2023 budget. The ex existing tax cuts of 42 kina 30 toya per fortnight will continue for the remainder of the year. Household assistance package lowering prices of key household commodities. In April this year, we announced that arrangements would be made by IRC with local firms, whereby firms would lower costs on key items such as flour, tin fish, rice, oxen palm, and in return, they would be granted an equivalent reduction in taxes. Unfortunately, these measures is still waiting to be implemented. IRC have just informed us that the change will require some additional legislation in October to implement these changes. So we are very apologetic for this delay. I really had hoped that this one would be in place by now. I assure the Parliament that we will be watching the performance of IRC very closely and supporting them in this area to ensure the changes are put in place this year. A budget of 100 million kina has been allowed for this initiative. Paying off arrears and outstanding obligations. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, a second key area of focus for the supplementary budget is paying off arrears and other outstanding obligations. 
the former administration often talked big, but then failed to follow up. Or more accurately, sometimes they would even sign a contract and then simply not pay. On coming to government, we established an across-agency arrears vetting committee. This committee identified 5.2 billion kina in outstanding arrears. This is a pretty shameful level of unpaid bills that we have inherited. We have been making good progress in paying down the stock of arrears. Still a long way to go. Over the two and a half years to June 2022, we had paid down 961.6 million kina in arrears. As part of this supplementary budget, we are allocating a further 300 million kina to reduce this arrears stock, lifting total expected repayments to over 1.2 billion kina by the end of this year. There were also other <clears throat> outstanding commitments that this government has been asked to meet. With some extra funds now available, we are going to accelerate paying some further outstanding commitments. We have set aside, for example, 210 million kina in this supplementary budget to start repaying the backlog of outstanding benefits for poor landowners. This is their due. It is also good for the country as it helps to get the Pogra mine open again. We are also meeting some outstanding court costs with 30 million kina. MOA outstanding payments of 40 million kina. Ex gratia payments to PDL six landowners of 30 million kina. On top of this, there is 200 million kina to prevent the build up or arrears in utility and rental bills. Let's work to keep the lights on and prevent any further lockdowns. Overall, over two thirds of the entire net spending in this supplementary budget is repaying arrears and outstanding commitments, a total of 810 million kina. This is sensible government. Meeting our outstanding obligations left over to the Marape Rosso government. This 810 million kina is finally paying down some of our hidden debts. And about time for businesses and landowners and others with outstanding bills left untouched for too many years, we hope we can continue to do this in future years. We want to restart, restore trust in government as a genuine partner. This will build confidence and ultimately provide the basis for higher rates of growth and social welfare. Other key financing items. Mr. Speaker, we have provided a further 50 million kina to cover 2022 election costs, bringing total funding for the election to nearly double the level of expenditure in the 2017 election. There was enough money to support a much better election this year. So I do look forward to the proposed parliamentary committee examinations of what went wrong and what can be done better. Once again, there is a salary cost overrun. This is 201 million kina, but much lower than in previous years. And of this, over 70 per cent is related to teachers' wages overruns. We continue to bring this area under control, but it is very challenging. After no pay increases during the latter part of the COVID-19 crises, 
it is now time to start increasing some salary payments. There is also a need to provide additional funding for the seven new districts that have been created, and three million kina each has been provided. There are also new members in existing electorates, and it is appropriate that they be given some funds for commencing programs through to the end of the year. For equity reasons, all districts and provinces need it to benefit the same. So an additional two million kina per district and province has been allocated, bringing the funding back to 10 million kina per district and province. So I do urge all members to spend your DSIP funding wisely and, of course, fairly, and across all of your electorates. Delivering good services at the local level, at the district level, is an absolutely critical part of our role as local members of parliament. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, this is a responsible, caring, supplementary budget. It balances additional revenues with additional expenditures exactly. This keep, keeps us on the road to budget repair and is consistent with our 13 year fiscal plan. We will ensure that the Independent Consumer and Competition Commission, ICCC, enforces the reduction in fuel costs as part of our household assistance package. We are quite proud that so much of the budget is going towards repaying outstanding commitments to build trust in government and for people and businesses to be paid their fair due. We are proud to support further work at the district level as well as the work in continuing to contain expenditures, blowouts in areas such as wages. I commend the 22 supplementary budget to the Parliament. Thank you.